I'm Jewel McDowell. I'm from Cary, North Carolina. I'm going to tie you a generic bait fish. Mostly uh, imitates a shad pattern. You can color it with markers um, to make it be uh, to make it resemble any of the bait fish patterns in your in your water. This is six aught white thread. And we're going to add a, <clears throat> a marabou tail and then put some flash around that. Just wrap that with a couple of soft loops to get it where you want it. We're going to add some crystal flash. I just cut the corner off this package and sort of dig out the three or four um, strands that I want. And that keeps me from having to stuff that stuff back into the package. And I'm just going to tie a little on this side. flip it over and tie a little on the other side. So I've got it sort of flanking the marabou. And the back portion of the body is a cross-cut rabbit strip. And I tapered the, the skin part of this just a little bit so I can get the thread right where I want it without having to fumble with it. And I'm gonna wrap back over the hair just a bit to get right back to the tail material. I'm gonna come up about 60 to 70% of the hook shank and just put a half hitch in it. The beauty of a <clears throat> full rotary vise is that I can take this first strip and once I get it started basically just spin this around make sure you, these are not overlapping just keep the fur high and the hide up against the hook shank Brush it back just like you do a soft hackle. But these are touching wraps. The last one I'm going to do is tie off underneath here just because I don't want that bulk of the tie off on top of the shank where my next material is going to be tied on. Now I've got some angel hair here, uh, wing and flash, angel hair, it goes by different brand names. It's just a finely shredded mylar. What I'm going to do is take a hunk of it and just tie it down the back of the fly like this. It won't be this long obviously, but I could start with that and then I'll just trim it later. So we just take a soft loop around that, wrap it back, and then we'll cut off just in front of the tail. So we've got a little flash in the back of the fly. And the last material we're gonna wrap on is this EP Sparkle brush. This is a Enrico Puglisi material and it's basically the same material that I just tied in but it's 
on a, uh, a dubbing brush and it makes it easy to wrap and fold. There's nothing real intricate about, this is a meat and potatoes fly, there's nothing real intricate about the, the tying method or the materials. The one thing I will say is that if you wrap this now and just keep wrapping it, you'll get big balls of this sparkle dub material and it takes forever to comb it out and by the time you comb it out, half of it's gone. So what we'll do is start the wrap and then fold it just like a soft hackle, just like a, almost like a salmon fly, but you're gonna keep folding that as you twist it. I'm not going to use the uh, rotary function here because it's easier to wrap and fold than it is to spin and fold that material. And again, because of the end of the fly, I don't want a big hunk of this material sitting on top of the hook shank. It's just for aesthetics. I'm going to tie it off on the bottom, a couple of wraps. When you cut these wire materials with your scissors, cut it way deep into the jaws. You can also spin it around and break it off. But if you cut it down here, then you won't ruin the fine tips of your good scissors. That's just a little bitty head that I put on there. Quick whip finish. Just about five of those, or seven, or nine, or three, whatever you want. And you can tell this material up front is a little bit bulky still. So what I'm gonna do is just comb it and sort of blend it into the rabbit fur. You see how nicely that separates and gives it shape. And the one thing I do with this fly is I take the bottom fibers right on the bottom and I cut those away so that now I've got a trimmer belly and it doesn't get in the way of the, the hook gap. So this doesn't keep a fish from getting that hook into his jaws. Um, finally, I like to put an eye on these things because I like them. I don't have any science behind it. It gives me more confidence to fish or fly with eyes, so I put them on. This is a craft glue. It's a waterproof glue. It's very gummy. And you just put a quick dot right where you want that eye to go. This does not take long to dry either, so that also recommends it. And you can see already what that looks like. poke this other eye on here, try to match them up. And it doesn't matter if you goop up the head a little bit with this stuff, because all it does, it makes it tougher. And we got a lot of bulk in the fly, so it takes up a lot of profile, which is what you want. You want a, you know, a big bait fish profile. If you want to get fancy with it, this will fish just like it is, but a shad will have a little dot right there, so you can put that in. And these things take markers really well, so if you want to get crazy and just put all sorts of colors in there, anything that's a permanent marker like a Sharpie will work. There you go.